My principal focus right now is the health and well-being of our employees and their families. And I think uh, you know, that should be the primary focus of most CEOs. We've been very fortunate. We have a small number of people across the world who have developed uh, any real symptoms for the virus. But we do have the parents of a lot of our employees affected. Um, and we're working really hard on um, a number of different initiatives that are new for a company like ours to be involved with. But we're supporting, for example, a clinical trial at UCLA on a new Japanese drug called Abigan, which, if it's effective, will be a low cost, widely available antiviral that you can start at early onset of symptoms. We're supporting uh, a number of initiatives that are focused on uh, convalescent blood transfusions, which is another very promising area for care, both for um, critically ill uh, patients as well as for healthcare workers. And then we're supporting a lot of local hospitals and healthcare facilities across the world where either our employees or our operations are. Bobby, I know you've taken a number of steps for your employees to try and make this time easier for them, too. Things like uh, waiving the 30-day prescription refill uh, that, that normally you can't get a prescription filled for more than 30 days without having to pay an excessive amount. Yeah, we're certainly doing things like that. But we've also got some really innovative programs like telemedicine providers for our employees in countries where there are national health care um, programs. We also have... Uh, private doctors available helping to assist and navigate through what can be a very complex uh, process getting into national health care. We're working with organizations like um, Wealthy uh, that provides mental health care or Sitter City to provide licensed child care. And um, I think when you look at the available tools today to allow people to work from home safely and comfortably to make sure that they're getting access to good health care, um, there are a lot more programs available today than ever before. And I think we've always been a pioneer in these kinds of benefits. But some of the things that we're doing now, like supporting these clinical trials uh, at important health institutions, um, I think these are things that are unprecedented for us as a company or any company. But um, we're, we're definitely feeling from our employees that the extra investment, the extra attention is appreciated. I, I read in the notes that all of your employees have your cell phone that they can call you if they need to. You've got 10,000 employees. Is that really true? So about a month ago, I, I, we sent out an email um, from my email address with my phone number, and we encouraged every single employee that has a concern that relates to their health care to just contact me directly. And so far, that's been working well. They've gotten uh, a lot of attention and a lot of good care from all of our providers and our our HR organization is extraordinary, and the team has been working 24-7 since we started work from home in our offices in China and our offices in Europe um, to really make sure that they were available for the benefit of the employees and their families. How many employees have, have personally reached out to you? Oh, I'd say a few hundred now, um, and but we're fortunate. Very few have actually tested positive so far for COVID-19. One of the initiatives we're working on right now is um, a trial for a blood serum test, which is a low cost, very accessible, 15 minutes for the results blood serum test that has FDA approval. It still is required to be um, administered by a healthcare professional. But I think when you look out over the next few months, when you start to think about what will make employees feel safe and comfortable coming back to work, testing is going to be a very important part of what we're going to need to be able to do. Agree. How, how quickly do you think things like that can get rolled out to the general public? And just based on how much research you've been doing in the medical field, how long do you think it will be before we're actually ready to go back to work? Well, every country is different, of course. I think in every government is going to treat uh, the rules with respect to their own countries differently. Um, we're taking guidance from the state, city, local and federal governments everywhere we operate. But then we're adding an extra layer of, of protection and concern. And so right now, um, most of the world will continue to be work from home for the foreseeable future. I think we're fortunate. You know, We have a very uh, collaborative business when it comes to software development. And so we have people in lots of different countries and lots of different offices who for a long time have been collaborating with each other on software development. 
So I don't think that we've had the same challenges from a work from home uh, perspective as other companies. But, um, you know, look, people are feeling the isolation and uh, frustration and anxiety. And so, you know, I don't, I don't even think that there's a real normal that um, is going to exist for a while. Our view is that you need to see a low cost, widely available vaccine. You need more antiviral therapies that are proven that are low cost and widely available. You're going to need more efficient, low cost blood serum testing. And so until all of these things are in place, uh, I think people are going to still have this anxiety and uncertainty. And, um, and, and, but we're working on a lot of these initiatives. Hey, Bobby, it's Andrew here. Um, in the world of Hollywood, as you know, uh, production has effectively halted and uh, production may or may not uh, resume uh, sometime this summer or even this fall. I know there's conversations in Hollywood about testing actors and uh, people on a set. Um, obviously, your business is very different because people can be behind a computer, but they, I imagine they don't have all that power necessarily at home. How does that get distributed and how does that affect production? Well, in, um, in your I, world? Don't, I, I don't know that we quite know yet. You know, most of the things that we have uh, in production and development are on track for now. I think we'll have to really reassess that in a month and in three months. But, um, you know, we've been doing things like encouraging our employees to upgrade their home broadband to the highest bandwidth service, and we're paying for that. Um, we we uh, had equipment available for take home. So all, everyone in the software development, art or animation functions, we made qu equipment available so they had the newest, uh, most secure devices. Um, but I think it's still too early to know um, what what the consequences of development will be over the next for the next year or so. Yeah, you know, we're very fortunate. We launched a new free to play Call of Duty a few weeks ago, and we've had over 50 million people sign up to play. Um, you know, Candy Crush is performing exceptionally well. M most of our games are seeing uh, record levels of engagement and people are getting the benefit of entertainment at home from what we do. Hey, Bobby, I, I know that people have been playing video games a lot more. How, how does that translate into profit for the company? Is, is there a way to monetize it all? Well, look, in, no one wins in a situation like this. Um, but, you know, in, in periods like this where people are at home, they're definitely getting the joy and the sense of camaraderie. And many of our games are very social. So while people might feel isolated at home, it is a way to connect with your friends, it's a way to connect with your family and do it through the lens of entertainment. So it's all, you know, it's much more fun. It's, uh, you know, a much more um, social experience than video games were 10 years ago. And I think people are really appreciating the benefit of that. You think that that uh, changes some people's maybe longer term patterns, even once this is over, maybe they get hooked on some of these new things? Well, I definitely think that uh, based on the numbers that we're seeing, uh, people are coming back who haven't played games for a while. A lot of new players are coming for the first time. So, um, you know, we I think the last number we reported was something like 425 million uh, users in our network. That number will probably be higher as we approach the end of the year. So if you think about that as a scale of a uh, user base, um, and we have more players than Twitch, than Twitter, than Netflix subscribers. You know, I'd say the only three networks that have more players or users would be Facebook, YouTube, um, and WeChat. So it's a big audience to begin with. 